Welcome to the Group Home Riches Podcast. If you have the desire to be your own boss, create your own schedule, and become financially free while at the same time helping people in need, then you've come to the right place. At GroupHomeRiches.com, we teach people exactly like yourself how to get started in the group home business. And on this podcast, you're going to hear their stories firsthand. So I started looking, I started researching how to open a group home here in the state of Arizona. I don't know how it is anywhere else. Everybody's tight lip because it's a competition. Everybody thinks that if someone comes on board, they're going to take their cut or their demographic or whatever, which there's never going to be a shortage of homeless people. There's never going to be a shortage of alcoholics or addicts or people being released from prison. So I just got frustrated. So I just started looking on the internet and I found your course. I was actually already starting a process by the time I came upon your course. So and the ball was already rolling, but your course kind of helped me to figure out how to email different organizations to let them know, hey, you know, I'm opening a group home or transition living home. I like to be put on the list, you know, of social services, things like that. We moved here in Arizona about 10 years ago. My husband and I started foster care. We were like 22. We were babies, okay? We did therapeutic foster care for teen boys. And therapeutic just means like the toughest kids you can get. So I started having my own kids and we kind of just stopped doing that. We put that off to the side. I got here and I started working at group homes for teen boys and teen girls. And I just did not like what I saw. It seemed to be all about money. And I said, how can I kind of still help kids, but just not work for the company I was working for? So that's when we started doing foster care. And I said, I would never adopt because we have six of our own biological kids. I said, I would never adopt. I said, I would never take in teens. And we did both. So we have a total of nine kids, seven boys, two girls. So we closed our license last November. And I started working for DCS, which is Department of Children's Services. And I worked with them for 15 months. And I worked with a lot of, a lot of them were, you know, previously incarcerated. A lot of them were addicts. And so I just kind of had this heart for people who are broken, but they were trying to get back together <laughs> again. They were trying to, you know, make it all work. And so I knew God was telling me there's something bigger. You're doing this. This is just a stepping stone, but there's something bigger. And just to back up a little bit, the, most of the kids we fostered and adopted, we fostered 27, adopted three, you know, all, of the, all their parents were addicts or, you know, just basically, or mental health issues. And so I knew something was on the horizon, but I just didn't know what. And uh, long story short, to wrap it up kind of a bit, I went ahead and started, you know, looking into how I can get a transitional living home. And so it was kind of quick. I think I made the decision in August. No, maybe it was July. We took some equity out of our own home and used that as a down payment. We closed on our house September of this year. And by October 15th, I think it was, we were full. And so we're already looking at another house. Hopefully by next month, we're going to go to the rent to own route this time because it's going to be quicker and it's going to be another home for transitional living men who are on probation or battling with addiction. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell. <laughs> I'll try to give you the condensed version. So yeah. It was perfect. <laughs> so very, <Yeah>. very similar <laughs> story to a lot of people that we talk to and you can tell you could tell by like just your background and your career choices, yeah. you have that, that motivation mm -hmm. to help people out. Right. I think it's the caretaker personality, something yes. like that. It's an official yes. term for it, but it's like you get energized when you do that. Right? Yes, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> and then, it, it could be addicting. It's, you know, I had to kind of like you know, rein myself in and, you know, learn to delegate and let people do, you know, like right now I have a house manager. I don't uh -huh. know how I was going to do it. I was actually just going to, work my job i work as a bht at a, a detox slash mental behavior health center it's like a hospital and i was gonna you know be at the house part-time and i didn't know how i was gonna do it but god said okay you know i'm sending you someone so i have a house manager in there he lives there so i'm at the house i want to say maybe three to five times a week i'm not one of those owners that just you know they don't know who i am i i roll my sleeves up and i get in there and you know, if the guy's got to do a job interview, I'm taking him to his job interview, you know, or if he doesn't have clothes, I make sure I'm looking for donated clothes and I'm giving him clothes, you know, so I'm pretty involved. I think you really have oh, yeah. to be at the beginning. You got to get your fingers yes. dirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
and I like doing it. You know, I, I feel like it didn't dawn on me till like, I think I had been working three weeks straight with my job at the hospital and my group home, but it didn't feel like work because I enjoy it. You know, it's, it's a relationship I'm building with these guys too. So it didn't really feel like I wasn't getting up tired and dragging every day. So if you've ever had to clock in for a job that you didn't want to, and that you're doing like what you're doing now, it's a, it's a wonderful feeling. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Very cool. So you, you work full time and you have the transitional home. Uh, well, I, I, so I step, yeah, I'm now I am PRN just so I can devote more time. Plus I have more, I have, you know, some revenue coming in from the transitional living home. Not a lot, but it's, it's able to help me step down a little bit and just, you know, work when I want to work basically. So I'm on call. Okay. Very cool. So, yeah, so yeah. that that was what uh, just kind of like the business structure. You know, we we are more almost passive investors, and we we will right. typically outsource. You, you know, really any any type of service, like any medical right. service, counseling. But it sounds like with mm-hmm. with your background, are you providing those services for your tenants as well? We are. So my house manager, he actually works as a peer support specialist, and what that means is. He's actually in recovery himself. So he's been sober for three years and he works at a MAC clinic. And I don't know if you're familiar with what that is. It's a medically assistant facility like treatment. So if someone's coming off of say heroin or methadone, a meth or something like that, they'll give them something to taper to help them come off of that. Um, I know it's very controversial because some people feel like it's, a, it's actually a drug, which it is, but if it's between the methadone or the suboxone, for them overdosing, you know. <laughs> so I've actually met some people who were in the process of getting their kids back from foster care system and they wanted methadone, they had jobs and they were, they had it all together. They seen, they seen, you could tell that they weren't on drugs, but they were basically, they could make it through the day. So basically that's what he does. And so he actually, he does some of the outsourcing for us. So if they have counseling, he sets them up, he sets the transportation. The only thing we do is like I do a weekly meeting with them. I, I do a group with them on Sundays and that's anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. But mostly everything else is, is like you said, outsourced. Very cool. So did you have to go through any type of licensing process or certification to be able to do your business how you do it now? So I started off, I got an LLC before I even opened because I knew that was going to be important. I'm still trying to, I'm scared to mess with a nonprofit because it just seems like you have to go to school to learn what you're doing. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, the IRS hunt me down. So until I really know how to work a nonprofit, I'm not messing with that. And so in Arizona, you can either be licensed or you can be unlicensed or you can be certified. I know everybody says you don't have to be licensed, but for us, we wanted to be credible. Mm-hmm. And around here, for some reason, if you're unlicensed, people think that you're a flop house or you're not doing things the way it should be done. So we just went the route, you know, we're, get, we're getting licensed. We are, we're already certified. So we're just in a process. I have to send them some paper, which I'm, I'm going to do this week. But yeah, that's basically it. I want to do, this is not lucrative for us right now because we basically charge, it's like a rent, even though you're not supposed to say rent, it's like weekly fees. But once I figure out how to get an um, insurance ID number, we can bill it as a rehab. And so we're talking a few thousand dollars, three thousand dollars just to house residents. And what we'll do is we'll have a step down house, which is out of pocket. So I've talked to people who went to rehabs and they've said, hey, I got kicked out on the 30th day. And I'm like, well, why? And they say, well, insurance stopped paying for it. And to me, that just breaks my heart. I'm thinking these people are trying to get better, but as soon as insurance stops, you know, they're on their own. So we want to we want to have a couple of houses to where it's where a rehab, but then we have a step down facility to where they can. It's like a lower level of care, and they can just pay out of pocket, and it's affordable, basically. So very cool. A little bit different than kind of how Andy has it set up, but. That's the beautiful part about this business. You know, de- it depends on, on what your goals are. You can see, you know, just by collecting rent payments or, or housing mm-hmm. fees, however you need to call them. <laughs> right, it's, right. It's, it's decent income and you could just rely on the outsourcing and then scale that. So right. that's kind of how Andy has structured his business. But if you are, you know, like the background like yourself, you already said, you know, you enjoy, you know, carrying and working with the tenants. You could right. do like 
you know, not as many homes, but if you get set right. up, you can still make, you know, like you, you talked about, I mean, it's, it's great money right. mm -hmm. right. on just a couple properties. Yeah. And you can I would like to read about three. what you're doing because you're, you truly are helping people out. Right. Yes. And there's a difference when, um, you know, we've all, we've all heard of the homes that give us bad names, you know, but the guys walk in my house and they're like, wow, this doesn't look like a sober living home. It's clean. And, and you know, you guys are involved and, you know, I don't want to be just the average sober living slash transitional living home. I want to be exceptional. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of bad press about it out there. Even the licensed yeah. facilities too. I mean, right, just because right. someone has a license or it's a bigger facility, that doesn't mean that there's neglect doesn't happen. Right. <laughs> so yeah. you can read nightmare stories about the VA, you know, clinics and things like that. And right. But yeah, that's they, also what sells, right? I mean, if you turn on the 10 o'clock news at night, I mean, <laughs> they're never going to tell you, right. you know, stories of all the people that are out there doing the right thing. They're going to tell you about, right. you know, the local uh, the, the local liquor store that got robbed and, you know, the yeah, bad yeah. Stuff because it's just sad. But, I mean, people are addicted to negativity and, and the media they knows are. That sells. So right. there, there's right. a handful of good stories out there. I know Andy's been on the news. We've had a couple members make it to the news, yeah. but not a lot of views on those. <laughs> not a lot of views right, on those right. videos. That, yeah, the bad, it's even with foster care. We, when we were foster parents for 10 years, we there's so much bad, you know, and it's it was kind of disheartening because it's like if they only knew that what we put into this is, you know, foster parents or even like group home owners, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be saying, I, I think, half as much as they say so. But and, that's why I remind myself. I mean, you are dealing with the demographic that in a lot of respects can be fairly difficult to manage. So right. not all the time, but I mean, the truth of the matter is, unless you're out there cherry picking tenants, I mean, it's, it's a tougher demographic to manage. It so is. because of that, it is it, in a lot of respects, it forces you to be, you know, you got to be tough at the end of the day. You got to have mm -hmm. it's tough love. Right. I mean, cause a lot of these people have right. the reason, in my opinion, that they are the way they are is because, they never got any discipline growing up and nobody ever right. told them You're what the right. difference between right and wrong is. So right. it's been, right. you know, you have to really think it all through. And I'm guessing that's probably, it's the house manager that you have. That's mm -hmm. probably, does he play that role or is he more yes, of? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he kind of, get, he gets involved. You know, it's, it's a fine line between you want your residents to feel like they're sort of home you don't want them to feel like they're in a work environment. So it's a fine line of letting your manager know, okay, you can enforce certain rules, but also don't be too in your face and don't rule with an iron fist. You know, that's kind of what we're working on now. He, he's a great guy. Everything is a learning experience there too. So, and I've, I've actually told them, I said, you know, I want you to be comfortable here, but I don't want you to see it as home because this is a place where you get your wings and you're supposed to, you know, you're grown men. So you're eventually you're supposed to get your own place, your own car, things like this. So don't see it as home because I don't want people to get complacent to where they're there for three, four, five years. You know what I'm saying? So it's a transitional home. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So but yeah, how he's pretty much the eyes and ears of the home. And, you know, we have cameras throughout the home, outside the home. So so that's kind of, I, I wanted to bring that up. You're focusing on a population that might need a little bit more supervision, yes. management. So how, right. you mentioned the security cameras. I've, I've heard, you know, great things from our members that mm -hmm. have done that. And that just brings up one of the advantages of, of this business strategy compared to rental right. properties. You have right. way more control over the property. You know, Andy, yes. with, your, with your rentals, you can't just pop security cameras in there to make sure no one's smoking in the units or anything like that, right? No, you right. can't. But you can do it with this line of work. Now, the you know, it comes with its own set of challenges. One of which is, well, what happens when the tenants go up to the <laughs> go up to the security camera and take it off the uh, you know, yeah. take it off the wall and everything else? Too. And if you if you don't think that that happens, then you're kidding yourself because it does. Right which is where uh, that key role of the house manager comes in. So how, how did right. you find this gentleman so, so quickly? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like in the, well, the beginning it was, of your, it was funny. 
I was interviewing because we weren't supposed to open until like the end of October or November, but I kept getting all these calls. And so I think he was the second person I interviewed to live in the home. And so, you know, I had just advertised on Marketplace, I think, and he responded. And as I read the first sentence and I was like, he, okay, he, I need to get this guy in the house, but as a resident. So he said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm three years sober. I'm a peer support specialist. I work here. And I'm like, okay. So he walks to the house and he's very nicely dressed. That He just walks tall and he walks like a leader. And I'm thinking, this guy's not going to want to share a room with somebody. <laughs> you know, he just mm-hmm. had that look to him. And so we started, he sat down, he goes, you know, he goes, well, will I get my own room? And I said, no, it's a shared room. And he goes, oh, he goes, well, something told me to come here to meet with you, but I'm not sure if it will work if I don't, you know, can't have my own room. So I said, okay, well, would you, you know, stay here as a house manager if I gave you, your, you know, your own room and just that decreased rent? Um, and he said, sure. His eyes got big. And I'm like, but you have to understand what you're getting into here. Like, this is not going to be easy. And he was, just, so he's a Christian too. And you know, long story short, he was like, this is something I want. This is something I would love to help you with. This is something I want to walk alongside you with. I can do this, you know? So he was supposed to just be a regular old resident and he's not, he, he's a house manager. So, and he actually told me, he said, I didn't really realize it was a sober living home. I just thought it was a sober living environment. So he kind of just showed up on accident, but it really wasn't an accident. So, um, yeah, it's all good. It's one of those it's, just, it's awesome how everything unfolds those god incidences <laughs> yeah <laughs> right <laughs> divine intervention yes 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 so very cool so that could be kind of how how we structure things is we'll have a house supervisor at each property right similar to that you know most of them similar stories they were just people looking for this type of housing but they tended right. to be trustworthy Mm-hmm. They don't. They don't have as much of an intensive role as it sounds like this gentleman does. Right. They're really just. They just need to be, kind of like the a presence. Know, a yeah, presence. like the yeah. eyes and mm-hmm. the eyes and ears at the property. So this gentleman, that your house manager, that could be maybe like a future operational manager. Yeah. Yes, and he's already talked about that. He's like, I see, I see where we could go with this. So he's already, and it's it's nice to have someone on your team that supports your vision and your mission because you can get anybody in there and they could just see it as a bed or reduced rent. But to get someone in there that is going to support you in what you do and he's going to see it the way you see it and try to work it the way you work it, you can't get anything better than that, you know? So that was important to me and I was not expecting that at all, but I welcomed it. So So I think Andy had to go to the uh, Thanksgiving festivities, it looks like. That's fine. <laughs> but that's fine. That's fine. Just kind of how, yeah, that's similar to what he did. I don't know if, if you heard his podcast in the beginning. We uh-huh. did. It was like the, our very first podcast, but he found a really good operational manager right in the beginning to kind of grow the business with him. And that's how, you know, he's, he's able to take on more of a, a passive role is by bringing on these operational managers. He kind of focuses on the real estate side of things, growing the business, making the connections. And then the operational manager is that person that, you know, has the passion for dealing with the tenants and the day-to-day activities and everything like that. Because you have to have a passion. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. If if, if you're going to be working in it, you know, that's the thing. You want people to specialize in what they're good at and what they enjoy doing. So, right. and that's, that's with any business, not just this. Yes. Business. Yes. Right. And then just kind of the way we, we do the business model, just focusing on, you know, the housing aspect of things and outsourcing right. all of that, like the care counseling, case management, all that is, it's handled by uh, typically like the, the organizations that we market to. Okay. And Rather than have like two or three homes where we're providing all the services and you do bring in a lot, like you mentioned, you bring a lot more revenue per property, but just we can scale those things and each operational manager can run like 15 to 20 of them using the, the, yeah, (laughs) but it's kind of similar. It's almost similar to property management, but the thing is the operational managers are six figure earners. So, oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how that's happening. Yeah. Well, 
maybe there will be some room to discuss that at the end. But yeah, yeah well, we can we can get into it here. It's it's um kind of I don't know if I can share my screen with you. Let me see. For the folks out there, I'm hopefully sharing my screen with Kelly. Can you see my screen? Okay, I see. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, yes, I can see it. So I'll show you just kind of how our numbers break down, and I'll I'll read it out loud for for the folks listening. But mm -hmm. we charge. It's our average bed price is around six hundred dollars per bed, which is very it's a very affordable for our area. Yes. Yeah. So if they were you know picture like a disabled vet who's trying to stretch out a social security income check, mm -hmm. even if he could qualify for a traditional you know one bedroom or studio all the housing right. bills rent everything like that you're looking at bare minimum a thousand bucks and that's probably right. you know, not really like a very nice place we're talking like mm -hmm. that's you can't find anything less than that except a room share right. right so and as you you can imagine we provide a clean structured environment all the bills are paid right. It's six hundred dollars. They get to live in it in a home. You know, it's not just they're not by themselves, but they're with people of similar background. So we want each mm -hmm. home to almost act like a family unit. So, you know, that answers the question out there for people. You know, who would even want to live in a home like this, right? Right. People that the harsh reality is that the alternative is mm -hmm. where? Yeah, the street. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> and anybody mm -hmm. that's right driven through any city in america in the past couple of years has seen that that's a massive problem okay yes it is. so this is just how our numbers work out so we're bringing in 1200 dollars in revenue per bedroom mm. now you said you have you have a three bedroom right 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 you so, start off small <laughs> yep so we it, it not a, not a bad thing you know you're still profitable you're learning the business right. but we'll mm -hmm. we'll look for big big homes so as many bedrooms right. as possible you know four right. or five bedroom properties will then right. convert the garage sometimes and even get another bedroom mm. or two out of it so okay. on let's say like an average five bedrooms we're now bringing in six thousand dollars in revenue right and then about half of that will go towards expenses and that mm -hmm. does include the market rent for our properties just right. for accounting purposes right. so that's our average net. So, okay. so when you say six hundred, you're talking six hundred a month, correct? Correct, six hundred per month. Okay, okay. Yeah, six hundred okay. per bed, and it's typically okay. just a, a roommate situation. Right. So this is our average net, which is. Have you looked into real estate investing before? Like, you know, being a landlord or anything like that? It's funny that you mention that because my my twenty year old son and my my husband for the past year have been looking into like how to do real estate. So they would probably be better at things like that. But yeah, I've never looked at like being a landlord or anything like that. So, but I, I guess I can of course see how, not. Much, how, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not great. <laughs> so are they looking into that, you know, flipping and wholesaling? Well, well you, see, yes, my son, he actually, yeah, yeah, he's, he was looking into flipping. He's kind of an entrepreneur, so he's trying to figure out where he, he fits in with all this stuff. So, but he's looking into that. My husband's looking into to real estate, and it's just not, it hasn't really taken off, but they're learning it. Yeah. Um, because we eventually, we want to do more of this. My husband was in, in the Army for 23 years, so he wants to also do a home for vets. Well, that's, but it almost sounds similar. This is our business model. So we, you know, we'll find the properties okay. at a discount similar to what a wholesaler or a flipper does. And then, so I, I asked oh. if you've ever looked into landlording before. And then I asked, you know, are, oh, okay. are they, they're probably looking into it to get more income, right? Right, right, right. Get more revenue, right? Mm -hmm. Which, what most people getting into real estate, that's, you know, the frame of mind they're in. Nothing wrong right, with that. Right, right, right. <laughs> Right, right, right. Um, right. The average landlord, you know, the average rental property brings in a good deal is two to three hundred bucks per month cash okay. flow. Right, right. So we're essentially 10xing that with this business model okay. and helping the okay. community out. And with right. the just kind of the, the methods we use covered in the gold course, mm -hmm. like I said, you know, one, one manager, operational manager could run, you know, 15 to 20 of these. 
that's okay. a totally a full time job though, right? <laughs> like when you say, full yeah, plus when you overtime say, sometimes. Right. So what, what what does his day look like? The operational manager is he going it's, from home to home every day? And- so we'll have the house supervisor at each property, right? Who's similar to your guy, maybe just they don't have as much responsibility as your guy does. I don't think okay. they're more of right. just kind of the eyes and ears at the property. Okay. And for the most part, our properties are you know they're they're functioning adults, sober living properties, transitioning okay. homeless, but you know, some of them have records, but we don't, we don't have any homes that are specifically, you know, for people coming right out of prison. Gotcha. Um, so their day-to-day activity, the operational manager is going to be marketing, you know, following up with, with website mm-hmm. leads, showing the property, okay. talking to oh. case workers. The issues that come up are going to be, you know, anything that's reported from the, the house supervisor, right, will go to the operational okay. manager. So, you know, that operational manager might not see the inside of a property for a couple weeks, you know, and then oh, okay. with, with everything being out then, and, and this is where kind of the bad press comes in. Like we're, we're not taking people in and not providing any services or anything like that, mm-hmm. or we're not advertising that we have, you know, case management available, for example, and then not providing it. Right. We're also right. not having like okay. a house supervisor or operational manager just wing it. <laughs> Most of the time, the, like right, the, right, all right, the services right. are set up before our tenants come to us and they're just needing mm-hmm. a house to operate out of sometimes. Right. They need right, that. Right. You know, as you notice, like a lot of the people you talk to for your referrals, they're not in the real estate business. They need houses. Right. They need beds. That's the right. biggest thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. Just by 10x in the cash flow on, you know, the business side of things, that's extremely powerful in real estate. Right. So (laughs) if, you know, one person operating 15 properties with an average net of 3,000, that's, you know, what you're up to with (laughs) monthly income. Yeah. And then when you scale it, annualize it, that's when you're making life-changing, you know, know, life-changing financial situation. And that's with no funding whatsoever from the state. Correct. Well, not directly. So many of the times, like the organizations that we market to, they're the ones that go and they get the grants, right? Or they they get all the donations and probably through HUD and whatever other grants are out there. There's a, there's a ton of them. There's okay. literally billions. So they're just paying available. for bed. There's no, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like the housing part of it is really just part of the services that they provide, but they need mm-hmm. people like us to do that. Most of the time you will come right. across, you okay. know, you come across nonprofits that do have their own home too, mm-hmm. but many, many of them just focus on the services part of things. Okay. And, they need people like us, <laughs> which, right, um, right. so that's how we do things and kind of mm-hmm. how Andy has it structured. But technically we are leaving money on the table though. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not collecting, you know, like the money through insurance or anything like that, right, which could right, be, right. it's so how much revenue per tenant would you be bringing in when you, when you get right. all that set up? So once we get, once I get my, it's called access provider ID, I could get up to 3000 for one person and they can usually cover that for up to three months. It, the Phoenix is crazy with the whole, it's like the capital of drug city and it's, it's sad. So there's so many people that need rehab and their insurance will pay for it. It doesn't matter if they have a job, if they don't have a job, insurance pays. And so... I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. I'm, I'm wanting to say maybe six months to a year, but until that happens, we'll just continue to do the same model that, you know, you talked, you shared about that you and Andy did. Yeah. That's what we, we really try to get across to people is, you know, you don't, if you want to go the licensed route and provide the care and right. things like you by all means, but the thing is right. you, you don't have to. You know, you could do right. exactly yes. what you did. You know, why not get started? Why not learn the business? Why not make right. those connections, right? So you know right. now when you do get set up and you get these other homes, you could probably get the homes filled up pretty quickly, right? Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. definitely. So let's talk about that. So 
were you doing the marketing <laughs> before you found the property or did so you? So I, it, it's, it's so funny. I thought it was going to go one way and it didn't, you know, I was so encouraged by a lot of the testimonies from the gold course members and, and, and I know it works, you know, don't get me wrong, but it didn't work for me. I, you know, call different social service organizations. I email people and I let them know, Hey, I'm opening soon. I even had a couple of consultants. I paid one consultant to tell me how to, to do things. And one told me, Hey, You'll never be empty. I'll give, I'll get you clients and no clients came from, you know, a consultation. No clients came from like these entities that I emailed and called. It just all came from word of mouth basically, or um, me kind of just putting on Craigslist or Facebook, but it's, it's all good. It doesn't matter where it comes from as long as, you know, you're getting the calls and you're getting the people come yeah, by. Yeah, when, you know, when, when, you're, when you're emailing people, a lot of times it, it might get forwarded. You know, it might be, right. you might not get a call back immediately. Right. And it might have felt like it was slow, but it sounds like, you know, it, 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 was, it was only like a month or two, <laughs> a month or two right. process for you. <laughs> right. And where I work also, the social worker, they're aware that I have a transitional living home. And sometimes they'll come to me and they'll say, hey, you know, we have this patient we think he would be good in your program. And a lot of times it's cool because like Andy said, you know, you know, you can't really cherry pick everybody, but if I'm working with a guy for a week and I work 12 hour shifts, you know, I get to see how this guy is. I can get to see if he has violent tendencies. I get to see, you know, if he's got triggers, I get to see if he can hold a job, things like that. So um, one of the residents I have is actually one of my patients that I worked with, you know, for my job. So it, it kind of just, yeah, it just comes from different uh, sources, I guess. Yeah, and that's a nugget for the uh, people in the medical field out there. I <laughs> think, the, you know, right, right. You guys are probably out there working with people that need this type of housing and you never even thought about it. Right. So, were you trying to make those connections and get those referrals before you had the house, or did you? I, yes, I was. I did it before, I want to say maybe a couple months before, and then right when we were in the midst of closing. I went to different hospitals. I went to different rehab centers. You know, I talked to people say, oh, we, we would love to have you as a referral. And, you know, and like you said, just because they didn't call, they haven't called in a week or two or three, doesn't mean that they won't, you know? So I have to keep that in mind too. But the quickest route I've found is Craigslist and Marketplace on Facebook. And okay. then just, you know, I have a lot of friends on Facebook and they just, you know, it's word of mouth, so... So get it. Are those like, are the tenants contacting you directly through that? Um, yes, they're contacting me directly or someone gives them my number and they'll say so and so I, I've even had people call me and they say, so and so gave me your number. And I'm thinking, I don't even know a Darcy or I don't know a Julia, <laughs> you know, so on there, I, I don't know who these people are, but I'm thinking maybe it's because they've seen something on my Facebook or a friend of a friend recommended us. So yeah. Yeah, once once the word gets out, it's and and if you do cast a wide net with your marketing, you have a lot of connections. Right. You are doing steady marketing. You have right. a nice website. Like you guys have a beautiful yeah. website, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that right, helps. Right. <laughs> are you getting website leads? I haven't gotten any um, website leads. So, but I do link my website. I share it if if someone wants to come into the program. I'll link, I'll say, this is our, our website. Take a look, see if this is something that you, you feel comfortable with. So this yeah. is what we offer, things like that. Yeah. So it'll take a little bit for like the search engines. You have to like build a reputation with them. It's right. all, and I think all like algorithms search... and stuff like that. It's right. Crazy, but... <laughs> and I think you have to pay for that. Yeah. Yep, you can, you know, you can, so we, we invest in what's called search engine optimization. Okay. And they're like the technical guys that get in there on the back end. And mm. I really don't even know exactly what they do, <laughs> but oh, okay. use keywords and blog posts and things like that. Oh. Or like link you on like articles and don't take my word for that. Okay. I know I'm right. very minimal, you know, SEO stuff that I know, but that's how we rank really high in the rankings. Plus, you know, yeah, Andy's okay. been in business for almost 20 years. So we have a, a lot of right. organic, good traffic too. But even the, even in the beginning, even if you weren't getting, you know, people weren't finding you through Google and like stumbling on uh -huh. you, right. I would almost guarantee about 80 to 90% of people looked for that website or you provided that link, but 
mm-hmm. you had something to provide at least. Right, 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 right. You yes. weren't giving them that impression of like going to look up, you know, your company name and then there's nothing there. Right, <laughs> right, you, right. You do not yes. want to leave that impression. So, no. And, you know, we, we do offer website development. You guys could get the same website uh-huh. that we use. But Kelly, right. you guys designed your own or did you guys have someone else do that? No, I actually, um, with the help of two of my teams, they helped me put it together oh, okay. because it was just so <laughs> confusing and I'm, I just didn't have the patience for it. But, you know, we did them, I did the meat of it and they just kind of helped the, the layout and things like that. And, but the, yeah, the, all the technical stuff can be, yeah. Was, when I did it, it was super frustrating. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think I'd rather be doing anything else, but. Yeah, it's done. So, so we have it's a three bedroom property. You guys bought it in when did you when did you close on the house and have it furnished? We closed in September. We closed in September. It was basically most of the. I would say ninety percent of the stuff in there is through crowdfunding donations, basically. So yeah, we got closed in I think September twenty first. We had some, unfortunately, some. I guess there were some squatters that you know, knew the house was empty and they came in and they stole a bunch of stuff. But thankfully it was just like little things. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like anything big. And that's when we were, <laughs> we already going to get cameras and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so we closed in September 21st and by October, I think 15th, we were full. So, so a couple of weeks of being open. And yeah. It, ha- it happened <laughs> faster than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you had talked about like the other you do know of other group homes in the area, you say? Uh, yes, yes. So we're living, and it's funny because as soon as I started doing this, I started meeting tons and tons of people who were doing the same thing. But before this, I wasn't meeting anybody that was doing this. So, you know, it's, so there's it's a lot enough. of, there's a lot of people doing, yeah. So Phoenix doesn't have a lot of homeless folks out there? Oh gosh, there's so many, <laughs> yeah. so many. Yeah, and th- that's why I said, I mean, even with the, you know, so many people doing this, the need is still, it's still there. It's still great. So. so I would bring this point up to your husband and your son, you said, right? That are looking into doing right, the right. real estate stuff. Right. So mm-hmm. you guys could combine the strategies and then take a look at this example. Do you see a lot of bandit signs out there? You know, we buy houses cash and things like that. Oh, yes, yes. Uh a ton of them right (laughs) how many sellers out there want to sell their home for pennies on the dollar so an investor can make a ton of money on it right not many (laughs) not many right so how many signs like that do you see for affordable housing very few very few how many people out in phoenix need affordable housing Oh gosh, thousands. thousands. <laughs> so that's kind of my point. <laughs> um, right. Luckily, you found us. You know, just just because of your your personality, right, and your motivation mm-hmm. to help people out. And a lot of people don't think of it as being. At the end of the day, business wise, it really is a real estate strategy. You know, you mm-hmm. guys have your first investment property. It's a mm-hmm. rental property. The difference is instead of just charging, you know, two or three hundred bucks more than your mortgage. Uh-huh. You guys are so you're providing affordable housing to not just one right. person but many, and you're right. gonna you're cash flowing more than any real estate investor out there, right? Right. So that's yeah. something something to think about. <laughs> and then if mm-hmm. you're the family, you know they learn how to find mm-hmm. the deals and you know rehab right. properties and everything like that. Rather than make, right. you know, like 10 or 15K on a flip or a wholesale, which mm-hmm. is great. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Those are right, right. are great. But over <laughs> time, you know, do the calculations of holding that property and netting, you know, two or three K on it with the group home model. What is your opinion on rent to own? I think it's a great strategy. So it's a way to because a lot of a lot of landlords are just they haven't spent the time to understand the business model, right? They have, they've dealt with evictions. They've had nightmare tenants. They've lost thousands, right? Right. Again, keep in mind, they're making two or 300 bucks per month on if everything goes well, right? Right, (laughs) right. One one eviction or, you know, one property that they have to fix up, their profit's gone, you know, for the whole year. Right, 
Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they're skeptical to begin with. They're imagining mm-hmm. not just one qualified tenant, but you know, six to twelve to fifteen right. people transitioning out of prison, right? Right, 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 right. So we do have a lot of people get started by leasing a property or even partnering mm-hmm. with the, with landlords. Take some education, right? right? You need to you need yes. to ex- explain the process to them and kind of sell them on it. But with rent to own, it's a great win win strategy. I think you know they can mm-hmm. still kind of own the property. They're getting their rental payments, but those contracts will kind of shift the management and almost you take on more of an ownership role. Right. So I think it's a great strategy, but I would bring it up to like when you're, you know, looking for properties or looking into apartments that are just advertised as a standard rent. The thing with the rent to own like the investors that are selling it as a rent to own, Mm -hmm. those are usually, you know, they're usually charging a premium. Right. So I think it would be better to kind of negotiate that with the owner directly. Oh, okay. And, you know, I'm talking like the, the companies that advertise like a rent to own property. Right. Right. They're looking for their typical end buyer is somebody that, you know, they have money, they have good income, but they don't mm-hmm. qualify for whatever reason. Right. They might have bad credit or oh, gotcha. they might be gotcha. getting paid under the table or some, right, something right. like that. Something kind of disqualifies okay. them, but they have sufficient income. And then those companies that focus on it charge a premium for that. So it's going to be right, higher right. than your typical like rent price or mortgage price. Gotcha. It, it almost seems daunting to try to figure out how I, you guys have an excellent template in your in the goal course about what to say, how to you know address the landlord and how to partner. But for me, I just don't I don't even know where to begin because <laughs> you know right now with COVID going on, supply and demand is crazy. There's not enough supply, so it feels like people would be less likely to jump on board with it because there's so many people needing housing right now where there's no, you know, there's really no competition. Where we've seen a lot of people have luck, like finding partners. And this is where I found like most of my real estate deals when I was like focused on wholesaling Mm -hmm. is stressed out landlords. There is way more of those now because they, they, they can't evict their problem tenants. And their mm. problem tenants don't have to pay them. I think right. that's countrywide now. Right, right, right. So I think things are kind of like inflated now, you know, with the stimulus and everything like that. And landlords mm-hmm. are kind of getting paid for that. But when that right. ends, there will be a lot of negotiations to be had. Right. And we've right. we've had a lot of members over the past year. If you're in, Yeah, you're in the Facebook group, right? Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... I've seen an uptick in that, you know, they're, they're okay. people are, are they going through, what are they doing? Are they going through Zillow? Because you can't find these land, these private landlords. I've, I've tried doing Google searches and I, I can't seem to find. I used to you know, find them on Craigslist. To... Did you? Okay. Yeah. It's, okay. you have to get the eye for it. Hmm. I can kind of tell if it's a company or if it's an owner, you can kind of tell okay. by like the, the copy that they use. Right. Like if it's right, fancy right. copy and a fancy headline and it's a gotcha. 1-800 number, I'll skip yeah. over that. Like if it's really nice okay. pictures, I don't even look at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but okay. yeah, and I, and I would find, you know, I would find those sellers to sell me a property for pennies on the dollar by wow. doing that. So that's one strategy. You know, if you go on Craigslist and look up, you know, apartments for rent or housing for rent, you're right. going to find thousands of people that it's that's kind of a problem you know they might not yeah. all be motivated right dire straits but this is a you know you being a group homeowner you're going to be a high right. income person you're going to be there right. for a long time and right. you've read through the guide it's about kind of pitching what's in it for them right exactly and this all depends on people's resources so if you got like i think the option you guys did is great Mm-hmm. If you can qualify to purchase a property, that takes right. all, you know, negotiating with the landlord and everything like exactly. that is a whole other step. <laughs> but right, 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 right. It depends on your situation. You know, if you're check to check, 
you don't see that changing anytime soon. You don't have equity in a property, right? Rather than just sit around and wait and be in analysis right. paralysis, you know, get, get right. out there, set up the foundation just like you did. Right. You knew that you were getting a house or that probably gave you a little bit more confidence, but it's really the, right. the same process for everybody out there. Right, right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, that's definitely the route we want to go next is either rent to own or find a landlord that we'll, we could partner with. Yeah, there's rent to own, there's there's owner financing, and then okay. even there's private capital also, like hard money loans. Mm -hmm. so once you own a couple properties through a bank, you're not going to qualify for a traditional mortgage. So right, right, right. You know that doesn't stop people from having a ton of rental properties. You just have to go find what's called the private money, which right, exactly. This is all kind of higher level stuff, <laughs> but it, right, it'll, it'll, right, be, right, it, right. It, it'll be a learning process for you guys for many years to come. You're lucky to have the leverage, right? You get, you have the system in place, mm -hmm. you know how things work and right. you're, you'll have pretty good income coming in here pretty soon. So mm -hmm. I would suggest, and I guess it depends on COVID, right? But real mm -hmm. estate meetup mm -hmm. groups are a great place to find people like I'm talking about oh okay so you, the family would love that you know right. I think that's the best way to learn things is through mm -hmm. somebody that's mm -hmm. done it before right so they'll meet wholesalers they'll meet people that that flip properties you'll meet people that have rental properties that are looking for ways to make additional income and you know just networking that's what everybody goes to those right. things for so you'll okay. meet people with private capital that are looking to you know they have the best problem to ever have in business okay. they have too much cash right right <laughs> so wow you said there is you were giving me the different options we could do besides the, the landlord the rent to own and you said something about a hard not a hard copy but uh hard hard money lending hard money that, lending. that would be go. that would be if you guys like if, if I, I forget what the limits are but i think it's like three properties you know that's how okay. a lot of banks work like you can't at some point and it depends on the bank it's usually like two or three properties eventually okay. you, won't, you won't be able to qualify for a traditional mortgage anymore through right a bank. right right we know right now we we, we can't because we have two so we're not even looking at the traditional right now so that's where the hard money lenders come into play so gotcha. there's the people okay. that that finance these people that flip properties or, or get a lot of rentals oh. okay little little higher interest rate but okay you know some money you know, is better than no money refi. right <laughs> right exactly yes and yes. right you can refi so yeah okay so that's what we talk about you know on the back end is almost think of yourself as a real estate investor eventually if mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. that's like the long term you know that's how you make that long term you know generational wealth it's right right you can build equity in the properties right you have tax advantages and right. instead of just, you know, that's what a lot of people get into rental properties for. They don't, they don't do it for like the cash flow, mm -hmm. but you guys will have the cash flow. Right. And, exactly. and you're serving your ultimate purpose, which is to help those people that you love working with. Right. right. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. And my family can get involved too. We can make it a, you know, that's, that's my dream too down the road is because I have, you know, so many kids or young adults and teens now that, you know, we're up in age. We're not up in age, but we're late 40s. So something happens to us, they can step in and, you know, it's like it could be a legacy. And they yeah. can kind of carry it on too. You, you could get, get your son finding the deals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, that's really how, if, if you do want to build, you know, long-term wealth with this type mm -hmm. of thing, you want to think of yourself as, as a real estate investor also. Yeah, combined that's good. with the group home operator. That's good, right? You call it. <laughs> it's similar to McDonald's. So, you, do you know <laughs> McDonald's number one source of revenue? Uh, Is it burgers no, or fries? Good, so I think the fries. Maybe I do like the it's, fries. It's real estate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so they have prime real estate, and they, you know, rather mm -hmm. than just rent it out to one business, they franchise it and. You know, right. similar to this, they have the real estate, right, right. Have that operational business running out of the real estate. Gotcha. So, okay. 
Yeah, I would recommend you guys, you know, go to real estate meetup groups. Meetup.com is a great place to okay. find those. And okay. I'm not sure how COVID is in Arizona right. now. Are they, you know, yeah. <laughs> Texas is like kind of <laughs> well, open. It's not like shit. Right. Down. We're mainly open. I, yeah, yeah. And we're, we're pretty much open. I don't know how the, the meetups do. I think a lot of meetups are still doing Zoom. Yeah, they're so, doing it on, um, online. But yeah, it still would be a good place to just network with with people right. in the area, and they and that's do, what it's all about networking. Yeah, yeah, as as you found with with your marketing, right? Yeah. So yeah, check meetup.com. Also, uh, like Facebook, there'll there'll be Facebook mm -hmm. groups. I'm sure you would just have right, to right. try to find them. But okay. Yeah. So what like what are kind of the the future goals? Well, you know how how big do you want to take it? Where where do you see yourself right. in a couple of years? For now, for now, I see like I said, when I first started, I knew okay, I think there's there will be more homes, but I see three right now. I don't want to have so many homes to where I can't enjoy life <laughs> because right. I'm you know so busy and because I do I, I get it. You know, I some people don't really step into into the homes, but I don't want to I don't want to be that type of owner. So I I feel like I want to do what I'm capable of doing. And then if my sons want to come in and it's more like of a business, a business like model, then it, you know, we could grow it bigger. But uh, for now, I kind of want to just stay maybe three, three houses. So on three houses, would that replace your full-time job? Income, oh, oh, yeah, definitely. Income -wise? Definitely. Yes, probably, definitely. probably a couple times over, right? Right, right, <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And then so, you would, yeah. on three homes, you know, providing the services that you guys provide now and are getting set up to provide would mm -hmm. would managing you know three homes with like a house supervisor or a manager in each right. property would that be like a full time job for you? Would it it would still kind I, of be part time, I, right? I think you know now that you say it like that. If I have help, it would probably feel more like a part time job. So maybe I could do five houses. I don't know. That's what we find with you know most yeah. people once they get to like that five or six home route it's not like a full-time job but it's when it right. kind of becomes like a part-time job right so mm. most people are bringing in enough income to kind of comfortably retire at that point gotcha. from their full-time gotcha. job and then okay. either find like a an operational manager to grow the business with them or right. just kind of focus on the on the homes you have now Earn, right, you know, right. Great, a great living and just kind of work part time on something that you love doing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. <laughs> and thank it's you. cool. This this is only the beginning, so you can right, kind of see is. the potential for it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I keep hearing, "Don't despise the the days of small beginnings." So you know, that's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you have any? parting words for the folks listening out there i would just I'm, I'm honored that i was asked to be on a podcast and i would just tell anybody who is either on the fence about whether they want to purchase i will just say that there's so much information in the gold course um you'll research it for days you'll look at the everything in the gold course you'll come back to it and you'll review it because there's so much information but it's there's good meat in there and i think it's it'll be a good starting point to teach you how to you know start your own group home Beautiful. Thank you. And I would, to piggyback on that, I would say there's almost too much information, <laughs> but, but we, yes. we, we want to put something in there for everybody, you know, at, at right. every stage of the process. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you come in and even if you just kind of have a negative mindset about business or mm -hmm. stuff like success, you know, we have a section on that, but everybody out there, you know, if you do go ahead and get the golds, course you want to get started shoot us an email you know let us know a little bit about yourselves where you're at and we'll kind of point you to the right material that can help you like right away so awesome thank you so much for joining okay, us thank you and okay. I, I look forward to seeing what what you can do with this we'll have to have you on a, a part two 